Boldly going where no show has gone before. This is The Week in Geek with David D. Squared and Brian Held. Heard live on News Talk 99.5 WRNO and the iHeartRadio app. Here are your hosts, Brian Held and D. Squared. Greetings, citizens of Earth. This is The Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. I'm your host, D-Squared, with... Brian Held. Brian Held, how the hell are you, buddy? Man, I am fantastic. I am so excited, Dave. What do you have to be excited about? Well, we should both be excited because this is now an award-winning radio show. Shut the front door. Yes, so on Friday night at ContraFlow... Uh, the Weekend Geek Radio Show was awarded the 2017 ContraFlow Fleur de Fan Award for professional contributions to ContraFlow and to science fiction and fantasy fandom on the Gulf Coast. And they gave me this handy glass that, you know, I guess it's for, you know, soda pops. Yes. Is that what it's for? That soda pop for glass? Soda pops. Soda yes. pops. So, yeah. yeah. I want to thank ContraFlow for having us and then, you know, Absolutely. giving us. This wonderful award, which Most is definitely. pretty damn awesome, actually. It is. It's <laughs> and, great. Uh, and, and we've had such a fantastic time all weekend. ContraFlow is such a great event every year, and we, we're happy to be here. Absolutely. All right, well, so let's lay out the show real quick. You know, as always, we'll open up the show with Top Nerd News, and then we have an amazing uh, uh what, scungy? Scungy? Oh, not an amazing scungy. We have an amazing guest. I am guest. pretty amazing. I'm sorry. No, you're not. Shut up. So, uh, scungy with his pick of the week, and then Connie... Willis. Willis. Yes. Uh, the most award-winning author in all of science fiction. I, yeah. I mean, like, like <laughs> what, what's the big grand award she had? The, the, the Hugo. S- she's got 11 of them. Not, not, well, yeah, but she got a, basically like a Lifetime Achievement yes, Award, too. Yes. There's like Sam Knight or something like that. Yes. I'll look it up again. But uh, So then, as always, we'll close out the show with This Week in Geek History. So without much further ado, you ready to do Top Nerd News? Did I miss anything? No, I think we got it all. All right. And now, your top nerd news stories from around the world, brought to you by QuestCon. For more information, go to quest-con.org. And now, your top nerd news stories. What's up? Why do you look so weird? There's something wrong with your face. Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm tired because oh. we had a very long weekend. Suck I, it up, Buttercup. We party. got a show to do. Oh, Be a no. man. I'm, Come I'm on. Fine. Just a whole lot of partying last night, Dave. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to hear that excuse. All right. So starting us off, what is topping us off today? Uh, we are going oh, to talk Justice about the Justice League. League. Yes. That's absolutely correct. So, uh, Brian, you just got to watch the trailer. Are, are you excited? Is it all that you wanted and more? You know, uh, I I have I have mixed feelings. Right, it did look good though. Right, there there were some really good aspects of of that trailer. I thought Wonder Woman standing on the uh, Statue of Justice was, you know, or Lady Justice was epic. Right, but there are certain elements. She where... stands well. <laughs> Great standing. No, it's. I mean, I I'll have to say that I am more excited now than I was before to see this movie, but there's just some certain things, like little details that are kind of, I don't know. I well, just, yeah, I don't we, right we kind it. of flip-flop on that one because actually I, I, it's Flash is looking like a dumbass and uh, Aquaman looks like, like a biker slash frat boy now with the way he talks. What so, was, yeah, he, what was the thing he said to Cyborg? Uh, uh, well, here it comes. Let's, let's give the listeners a hear. I had a dream. It was the end of the world. I think it's something more, something darker. This is why I brought you together. Can we get any darker? I'm mad. Yeah! Talked over it. Oh, awesome. As a bad signal, that's your... Oh, shit, sorry. (laughs) That's your signal. That means we have to go now. Yeah, that's that's what that means. It's so cool. So I... My man. It was the line okay? So well, yeah. I mean, like, like a, a cyborg had son, said something. It was like, like you know, that you're not going anywhere. Whatever. He grabbed him out of the sky. Yeah, this and ride's so, not over. Yeah, and he's and like, then, my man. And then the whole jumps on the uh, the Batmobile. Yeah, with the Batmobile with a anti tank gun on it. Right, and everything. He's got yeah. like missiles. He's got he's got oil that shoots out the back. He's got a parachute. 
and and, right, no, and that's not right. Batman's line, you know, it's about to get darker. Like, can we get any darker with with the DC EU? Uh, no, and that's that's why I put that in there. It seems like uh, they're they're they're, they're just going to embrace the dark side. Oh, oh that's that's trademark. So they're embracing the darkness of the DC EU. Uh, look, I mean, it. <laughs> I'm not. It's not really getting me more and more excited. I right. mean, the trailer dropped. And I'm like, yeah, I watched it. I mean, the Parademons fighting that looks pretty damn cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, Batman blowing up a big building and driving the Batmobile through it looks fun. But uh, I, I'm really, I, I don't know because I mean, the, the, the trailer opened up with uh, uh, Lois Lane, you know, crying, you know, crocodile tears over Superman, you right. know, right? And so I. I don't know, man. It's not. It's not building up any enthusiasm in me. So I don't, I don't know. know. Next month we'll we'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. All right. So now here's something else that I think you'll really like. What's that? The Venom script. Uh, it's got it's got an author, and it is the uh, the author of Fifty Shades of Grey, your favorite movie. It, no, I know it's your it, it's, it's your dirty little secret. Of him. What? <laughs> so um, your dirty little secret? No, Dave. You sure? I, uh, I have no interest in Fifty Shades of Grey at all, other than when uh, Gilbert Godfrey reads it because that is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's Kelly Marcel. Uh, now, it, it, it's she. She's a female writer, so uh, you know they're trying, you know, to get. You know, more female voices in no, there. That's you know? great. Yeah, and I just I don't know anything about her. I have nothing to compare it to. Uh, I mean, she she did the TV series Terra Nova and uh, Saving Mr. Banks, which I've never. I don't know what the hell Saving Mr. That, Banks. That is the uh, movie about. Uh, oh no, Disney. Walt Disney yeah, and Barry that was Poppins. a good movie. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm on board then. I mean, yeah. Look, if she can write well and it it's a, a good story, then you know, yeah. All right, that's fine. If but, she writes real goods, right? But <laughs> Venom is not exciting me all that much. So. Well, well, maybe Venom is now going to be a new BDSM character. Oh, jeez. You know, that, that instead of it being an, an alien symbiote, it's a gimp suit. Oh, God. Yeah? David. No? Oh, Maybe so? <laughs> Stop taking off your shoes, carnage. Brian. Stay focused. I am focused. All right. So, I, I don't know. We, we'll see. I mean, we have, we have no idea what the script's going to be. We have no idea. But, I mean, it, you know, it looks like uh, I could get on board with that. I can yeah. get on board with that. All right. We'll see. All right. Now let's talk about some Star Wars news, Brian. Okay. Uh, we found out why the, uh, the the bartender at the cantina is a droid racist. Um. Yes. Yes. Uh, apparently, from the new book, Star Wars, from a certain point of view. Um. Wh- wh- what's the guy's name? Like Werger or something, something like, like that. that. Something but stupid. His parents were killed by droids. Oh. Yeah. It's very da, 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 da. Right. Da, so da, he's. Da, da. He's like, no droids in this cantina. We don't serve yeah. your kind here. I mean, droids don't even drink, so it's not like he's cutting off any sort of like you know uh, cash flow. Wow, well, you, you know, know. What, what if what if somebody I'd like a hot droid? can of Earl. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, he could be providing oil baths to those guys well, and making extra be. revenue. Well, the, the one thing I like about this book, and it's out now, Star Wars from a certain point of view, uh, is that they're taking like the little little dangling participles that are in in the Star Wars universe and and flushing them out or fleshing them out and and giving them real stories behind that. I mean, I don't know if this story is a big attention grabber, but it goes back to kind of like what we talked about last week where with Demolition Man, I want to know how the franchise wars were started, how they were won. And so Star Wars is kind of doing that with this. You know, I mean, there were the two twins in the cantina uh, was it the extended cut or something like that? Oh, those females. Guys. Yeah, yeah, they were yeah. twins. Yeah, and yeah, it turns they, out they were bounty hunters. Yeah. And but they just had one second of screen time, and then right. boom, you know they. What, well, while it's not canon, I also suggest checking no, out tales but, uh, tales of Mos Eisley. Well, yeah, none, none really of it's canon. That's that's why the, this, from a certain point of view, is canon. Is canon. Yeah. So, but that that rolls us into to our next topic. That we're having a sequel to Timothy Zahn's Star Wars Thrawn. We got another Thrawn book coming. I out. know. Next summer, it's going to come out. So, I mean, like a lot of people are just like, like I, I was really upset when they blew up the canon, you know, or blew up all the extended universe stuff with uh, Star Wars. Right. Because Thrawn was basically deleted from history. And Disney and, is bringing all the good parts back. Yes. And, and you know, and they put him in Rebels, you know, and, and some, some crazy hipster was like complaining, you know, like, oh, Thrawn, he, that story arc's over in Rebels. Who cares about Thrawn? It's like, pick up a book, you son of a. Right. Pick up a book. Oh, read yeah, a book. Honestly, read a the best, book. The best Star Wars novels were. Oh, I mean, Zahn, oh, Zahn, Zahn, Zahn absolutely. Is, is a, is a, he's a god among men. Empire Empire yeah. still he, one of the he's best. He's a man books among written, boys. Period. Well, hey, while we're talking about Star Wars, uh, Last Jedi tickets go on sale tomorrow. <gasps> what? Yes. Yeah, During so. halftime of Monday Night Football. So. Oh, are you ready for some football? No, I am. No. 
I'm ready for some football I and some too. Star Wars. How about some Star Balls? Well, there's <laughs> the only reason you're ready is because the trailer's going to be coming on Monday Night Football tomorrow. I know. That means you're going to have to suffer through some football. No, that means I'm going to go to YouTube after it airs and watch it there. But you won't know because, like, the, the games don't always go to halftime at the same time. No, I'll, you I'll you know. might actually have to, like, you know, see some real estate acquisition in, in, in full, full speed. No. You sure? <laughs> well, I did not know that, so I, I'm, I'm actually pretty excited. So uh, we, we get to see a new Star Wars trailer, see some, you know, some concussions. I'm right. excited. I'm excited. All right, well, you know what? Do, what else do we have, Brian? Is we missing um, anything? Well, there was this thing about um, Apple doesn't want to acquiesce to the FCC about uh, including FM chips in their phones, their new iteration of iPhones. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, well, that's the thing. I mean, it's... Uh, with with Wi not Wi Fi with with internet streaming radio and stuff like that you kind of actually don't need it but uh, with, with the FM thing that they're just trying to like during storms and stuff like right. that you know so that if if you can't actually you know if you run out of data or you just don't don't have a signal because the, the tornado or the hurricane blew up your cell towers then you can still have the FM band you right. know now now granted sometimes the same thing happens to the to the FM bands as happens to cell towers true, true. but you know it, it, it's not like an emergency fallback, but it kind of is. It's another yeah, way to, to keep in touch with with the world. If you know, you, and of course, you know, we have a soft spot for FM. We absolutely. I think do. everyone should have FM chips in their phones <laughs> so that they can all listen to the glory that is the weekend geek. Of course. All right. Well, you uh, you ready to go to break? Yeah, yeah, uh, guys. When we get back, uh, Scungy is going to give us his pick of the week and uh, more, uh, more broadcasting. Contraflow. Wow, that was loud. It was a little loud, Dave. I'm just trying to wake everybody up. Wake okay. up, Brian. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm <laughs> he, he's, he's looking rough. I'm feeling a little rough, but uh, guys, yeah, we're broadcasting from Contraflow. So stay tuned. You're listening to The Weekend Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Black Tie Tans, the premier mobile spray tanning professionals of New Orleans. Black Tie Tans will come to you and give you a natural glistening glow on the go. First time customers get 20% off their first tan. Find them on Facebook at Black Tie Tans or email them at blacktietans at gmail.com to set your appointment. Going to a wedding? Going out to the club? Black Tie Tans will give you the look you need. Black Tie Tans, tell your pale friends. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid by Nancy Hansen, is now an audiobook read for you by Brian Hell. It's a tale of a young girl from Tortuga who disguises herself as a boy and bluffs her way onto a pirate ship, chasing after her one true love, only to find adventure on the high seas. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid, is available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. Get your copy of Jezebel Johnston today. Are you ready for some football? Starting September 10th at the 14 Parishes Restaurant, the Independent Gaming League will be running their online Madden League. There will be discounted food and beverages for all players throughout the day, and all your favorite Sunday games will be airing, so you won't miss a down. Players competing from the venue can also take part in free mini games for prizes provided by our sponsors. For more information about the Independent Gaming League and to register, visit IGLTournaments.com. That's IGLTournaments.com. Join the adventure at QuestCon October 20th through the 22nd at the Mobile, Alabama Convention Center. We're taking over downtown with great events like our Apocalypse Zombie Experience, Post-Apocalyptic Wrecking Yard, and our Halo Drop Pods. We have fantastic guests like Jodell Furlin from Cabin in the Woods and Twilight, as well as Aaron Zetch from Ruby. There will be vendors, artists, and even a kids' con for the little ones. QuestCon October 20th through the 22nd. Check out quest-con.com for more info. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com forward slash shop and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. 
Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. This is the Week in Geek with D Squared and Brian Held. Outstanding. Miss any of today's show? Download the Geek Podcast at WRNO.com. Here are your hosts, D Squared and Brian Held. Welcome back. This is the Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. This is your host, D Squared with Brian Held. Heath. Brian Held. Oh, that's your name? Yes. You don't look like a Brian. <laughs> what do Brian's look like? <laughs> Not you. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Well, you know what? Scungy is uh Scungy, I don't feel like doing your intro because you're already here. You've already been talking. So, hey, Hi. Scungy, what's shaking bacon? Uh, hi. Hey. hey. All right, so what are we talking about today, man? We're talking about a game that I've been waiting for to come out for years now called Cuphead. Cuphead? Um, Cuphead. It's, it's like a- fractured but whole? Yes, it's like Cuphead. Fr- Cuphead. Cuphead. Get your mind out I, of the gutter. I don't know. What, what, what the hell is Cuphead? <laughs> it's it's exactly what he says. He's a Cuphead. Um, this is a uh, side-scrolling uh, shooter for uh, Xbox One and PC. Okay. Um, what sets this out from everything else, the game has been in development for a while. It looks like a 1930s cartoon. Okay. It looks like but a side scroller. Yes, it looks exactly like I've waited for this technology for years now to have side scrolling. It's been around a while. <laughs> the, <laughs> they have been a while for, the, but this one is. I'm waiting for the 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 graphics behind this. It looks like you're actually playing a cartoon. Okay. It doesn't look like a lot of times you have overlays with games, and right? Like it'd tell, be like a like a cartoon background, but you can tell that you, the characters are animated, right? Yeah, like they're animated bit or whatever, yeah, and everything like that. No, this looks every single frame of it looks like you're watching a cartoon. Maybe like playing uh, what was that uh, Dragon Slayer? Kind of like Dragon All Slayer. Right. How Dragon Slayer was a cartoon, but this has got that style of like those old like Silly Symphony, the Walt Disney cartoon. Steamboat right. Willie. Steamboat okay. Willie like that, right. except it's in color, but it's got that grainy Technicolor to well, it. Well, that, that's what I was about to say. I mean, it, it, so it's in color, not black and white, because when, yeah. when you started talking yeah. about it, I, I started thinking of uh, uh, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions with yeah. the uh, the little cool uh, Spider-Man. The part of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, this one, it, it it's in color, but it's the color is... It's got that graininess to it. They okay. like put a filter over the screen, so it looks like it's been dated for many, many years. Right. It's even got like some of the cigarette burns or like the little uh, <laughs> oh, little t- time to change the reel, yeah, yeah. that kind of stuff uh, in it. And um, it's uh, it, it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, this game is wonderful to look at. It's got side scrolling parts of it where you're going to be running around trying to get to the end of a level, shooting enemies, okay. but mostly it's made up of boss fights. Basically, the story is is that Cup, Cuphead and his brother Mugman, not making this up, <laughs> <laughs> went to the Devil's Casino and played craps and lost their soul to the Devil. And okay. got, got turned into cups? No, they okay. were cups before. Well, instead of taking this soul right now, the Devil said, go out and get the souls of all these other people, and then I'll let you off the hook. Ah. So, like, you're fighting, like, giant flowers or carrots or, <laughs> like, like these two um, mice that are, like, boxing mice and everything like that. It's just over-the-top, you know, weird, weird stuff. But it's a lot of fun, and it's very challenging. It's Extremely hard. Weird, weird, wild stuff. Weird, wild stuff. Yeah, yeah. Crazy, crazy stuff. So yeah, it's um, uh, but it's it's a download only, and it's uh, twenty bucks. Really? Wow! And what's what's the play time? Um, I've played it for about three and a half, four hours, um, and I'm not done yet. And okay. there's a lot of replay value you can go through. There are many different difficulties and trying to get everything in all the levels and whatnot. So right. now, why, why have you been waiting so long for this game? What makes it stand out that, that you're like, I've got to play the Cuphead game? Because of the art style, like I said, I've been waiting for tech, the technology to get there. 
when we've always like you growing up, you're watching these cartoons and they have a video game. Like you watch like Ducktales and you watch the cartoon Ducktales. But when you get it, it's pixelated and you play right. the game. You want to play a game that is the same as watching it. Yeah. So this huh? is a huge step in that in that okay. direction where the the gap from the medium is now really sh- small. All right, so when are they going to make like a GI Joe uh, game? I See, want I want a GI Joe the, game, just just in the eighties style of GI Joe so cartoons. It is, you know what? That this opens a door for that. You know, you have the chance of having those type of games now with a game like this. Well, at twenty bucks a game, they're not going to make a whole well, lot of scratch. Be, yeah, well, I mean, but this is like I'm said, rich. A, but this is an independent game. It's not okay. like by a big studio or anything like that. Maybe Dave, you should send some correspondence to the developer. You mean like write a letter? Yes. Like a dirty heathen? <laughs> like a stamp? He Never. doesn't know how to read. <laughs> I got the electronic emails. <laughs> So, yeah, um, and then uh, the other thing I really wanted to talk about was um, there's a new technology that's been using with the PlayStation. Um, a lot of games are coming out where you're using your phone as the controller. Okay. Now, there's this one game that came out called Use Your Words. Now, I talk about a lot of a lot of games there. Yeah, you use your I words. I see that all the time. Yeah. Now, a lot of the games that are reviewed, you know, they're... You know, they're hardcore, you know, fuck it. This is a party game, a pure party game. Okay. What it is, every you can play up to six people in a room, everybody grabs their phone, and there are four different games to play. One of them is, look at this picture and write a headline for the picture. All right. So everybody will sit there, write a headline, and then they show them on the screen, and everybody votes on which one's the funniest. Okay. So it's kind of like almost like a Cards Against Humanity but instead of one person voting, everybody votes. Okay. And it's an hysterical party game. And it's something that anybody could pick up because if you've got a phone, you literally go on the one and ty- type in the room code and anybody could play. And you could actually play with spectators. Like people can watch and vote on stuff as well. All right. It's, they're doing a lot of games like this. They, the people who made... Um, uh, until Dawn okay. are making one uh, called where it's a social deduction game where everybody's going to sit there in the room and make decisions of the story playing out between these two police officers, what they should do. So everybody. So like, 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 like real life, life clue, like kind of like <laughs> real time strategy clue. Not like not like that. It's just like, all right, what should they do? Should they. Um, interrogate this guy. If they do, how far should they go? So everybody votes on it, and it bran- a branching story. Yeah. So it's like kind of social interaction with your phone and video games. And they got so many other games coming out using this technology. Sony's like really back in this. They okay. like it because it's pick up and play. You don't need a lot of stuff. Well, and everybody's got a cell phone these yeah. days. So yeah. All right. So you said it's a party game. Why do you keep bringing me party games? I, I don't have any friends, so I can't play the game. So why do you keep bringing these up? Are, are, you, are, but I'm, tr- I'm you, trying to get. Are you Taunting me? I'm trying to get get you to take the hint. All right, make friends. Nope. All right. Well, yeah, but it's not all about you, Dave. We're it is telling, all about me. Telling our listeners, you know, I'm sure many of them have lots of friends well, and they have parties all the time but, that they well, can no. invite you to. No. Well, okay, yeah, invite I, me. I, yeah. So that's basically what we're saying. Everybody, please in, invite Dave to your parties. He's lonely and sad. You know, you need he needs some help. And he wonders why he gets fired every week. Yeah. No, actually, I'm going to fire him this week. <gasps> Are oh, you? Be fi- I've been in rare form. I have been. I have been messing. Has with he been this a meanie head all, all weekend, weekend long? He has been busting my chops. Yeah. So if anybody anybody ask, you know, when you see Brian Held, remember that he carries my bags. Yeah. All right. Wow. Uh, he's Elvis. I'm Colonel Tom Parker. All right. Scungy, you're fine. Ah. No, I'm kidding. Win an award, you know, and I suddenly he thinks he's part of the award. Is that what he thinks? Well, you know, you put this guy on a billboard once, and it goes straight, I goes straight to my head. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you didn't get to uh, you didn't do House of Shock this weekend, huh? No. Uh, well, we did it on Friday night, but we we rained out because of the you know the hurricane. The, yeah. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Right. The, the, the no, no hurricane. But all right. All right. So so uh, are they open next weekend? Yeah, we're what days? Open next weekend, Friday and Saturday, and then the weekend before Halloween, we're open uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then we're open Thursday through Halloween. Good deal. All right, and we will be out there. We'll put up an event at some point. Yes. So yeah. we're uh, gonna go get liquored up and go to the House of Shock. Absolutely. Give me some moonshine. Oh yeah. All right. So what we got next, Brian? Guys, when we get back, it's our interview with award-winning author Connie Willis. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Weekend Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO.
Black Tie Tans, the premier mobile spray tanning professionals of New Orleans. Black Tie Tans will come to you and give you a natural glistening glow on the go. First-time customers get 20% off their first tan. Find them on Facebook at Black Tie Tans or email them at blacktietans at gmail.com to set your appointment. Going to a wedding? Going out to the club? Black Tie Tans will give you the look you need. Black Tie Tans, tell your pale friends. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid by Nancy Hansen, is now an audiobook read for you by Brian Held. It's a tale of a young girl from Tortuga who disguises herself as a boy and bluffs her way onto a pirate ship, chasing after her one true love, only to find adventure on the high seas. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid, is available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. Get your copy of Jezebel Johnston today. Are you ready for some football? Starting September 10th at the 14 Parishes Restaurant, the Independent Gaming League will be running their online Madden League. There will be discounted food and beverages for all players throughout the day, and all your favorite Sunday games will be airing, so you won't miss a down. Players competing from the venue can also take part in free mini games for prizes provided by our sponsors. For more information about the Independent Gaming League and to register, visit IGLTournaments.com. That's IGLTournaments.com. Join the adventure at QuestCon October 20th through the 22nd at the Mobile, Alabama Convention Center. We're taking over downtown with great events like our Apocalypse Zombie Experience, Post-Apocalyptic Wrecking Yard, and our Halo Drop Pods. We have fantastic guests like Joe Dell Ferlin from Cabin in the Woods and Twilight, as well as Aaron Zetch from Ruby. There will be vendors, artists, and even a kids' con for the little ones. QuestCon October 20th through the 22nd. Check out quest-con.com for more info. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com forward slash shop and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. Now, back to the Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO with David D. Squared and Brian Held. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Yeah, you definitely want to tell your enemies. Welcome back. You're listening to The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. This is your host, D Squared, with... Brian Held. Brian, we have an amazing guest on the line right now. Why don't you introduce her to everybody? Yes, we have award-winning author, Miss Connie Willis. How are you? I'm good. Fantastic. We're so glad to have you on the show. And uh, so, tell us, your favorite holiday is Christmas, (laughs) right? Uh, Yeah, it is. (laughs) It is. Um, I have, for some time, um, been writing a Christmas story every year for uh, Asimov's magazine, and um, uh, uh, with a few, you know, I've I haven't some years I haven't finished it, but but I've tried to do a Christmas story each year, and I I uh, because I just I've always loved Christmas, and um, I love it partly because it's such a bizarre holiday. It's it's this strange amalgam of, of family holiday and and historical holiday, and sentimental holiday, and, um, you know, and religious holiday all sort of crammed together, you know, and big commercial holiday. I even like the commercial parts of it, I have to admit. So, so, so you like hearing Christmas carols during Thanksgiving? I do. Oh, I do. I know right. it's terrible. I was all excited the other day. I went over to Big Lots, and they already were getting their Christmas decorations out. So, and this did not annoy me at all. So I'm sorry. I'm one of those people. So. No, no, it's cool. But, uh, of course, the most important thing we had to talk to you about today is uh, with all those stories, you have a new book coming out that's going to be on sale October 10th, and it's called A Lot Like Christmas. Yes. Yes, that's right. And it's a collection of my Christmas stories. 
Um, and uh, it is, you know, uh, it ranges from, you know, I, I have very um, fierce ideas about Christmas stories, <laughs> right, um, right. I should say. I, I really get very cranky when people break what I consider to be the rules of Christmas stories, one of the rules being that you don't kill people in Christmas stories. Of course and not. Yeah. So I, I, you know, have been known to go off on extended rants about um, the very special Christmas episode of things like Little House on the Prairie, where they see fit to destroy small children in a blizzard, <laughs> or Hans Christian Andersen, who kills little match girls out in the snow and stuff. Um, I think people want cheerful at Christmas, but not soppy. And that kind of is a really hard line to walk, you know? Do you tend to fall off on one side or the other? Well, and, and, stuff, and so. your, your stories here really run the gamut, right? I mean, we have some that fall into kind of the traditional vein, uh, miracle features, uh, bits about uh, It's a Wonderful Life and Miracle right. on 34th Street, but we also have the, the science fiction. There's aliens and androids and just a, a complete collection of just running the entire spectrum of, of sci-fi, right? Right, exactly. Um, and I have, I have a, a traditional story about a modern, um, you know, modern threesome of magi that, that go off seeking some star somewhere. <laughs> and, uh, and then at the same time, I have a story about a robot who wants to be a rockette. And um, I've just, I, I've tried, I think science fiction is perfect for for Christmas stories, because it, it adds that extra that extra twist of something. So, well, we and I have a question from from one of our listeners actually. Um, why science fiction? That's how you got started. You know, what what is it about science fiction that that speaks to you and, and that you continue to write in this vein? You know, um, that is always like a hard question, like asking me why I like Harrison Ford or <laughs> chocolate. You know, it's to right. me the answer is obvious, uh, and it's hard to explain. Therefore. Um, but I would say that when when I started reading, I started reading the same way other people did at my time of life. You know, they they were kids and they were reading Bradbury and they were reading Heinlein and they were reading Asimov's and stuff, and that was all very exciting. But um, really early on, um, I was totally all I had were the library books that I had access to. I didn't have books of my own, and so so quickly my library ran out of science fiction novels for me to read. But luckily, they had the year's best collections of short stories, and it was when I read those and I saw this incredible range of things that you could do. You know, I would read a Philip K. Dick story, which makes you question reality and whether you really exist and stuff, and then I'd read a a really sweet story by Zen Henderson, and then I'd read a really horrible, dark story by somebody else, and, you know, and, and they were all really good stories and i was like my gosh you can do just about anything in science fiction and they will let you you know they'll let you try anything and so when i got into the field i thought this is the place for me i can try anything i want and i never for the first few years i didn't think of myself as a science fiction writer i was like i'm writing these science fiction stories but when the time comes that i have something i want to say and you know, and it doesn't fit science fiction, I'll just write that too, knowing <laughs> nothing about publishing <laughs> or the publishing world. Um, but but I never actually found anything that I couldn't do just as well or better in science fiction than in mainstream. So I stayed where I was because I, I still love it. I still think it's perfect. And I don't feel, it's not a field that I feel restricted by at all, except that occasionally... Uh, people will say, I'll say I'm a writer, and people will get all excited, and then they'll say, what do you write? And I say science fiction, and you can just see <laughs> the air go out of the balloon. Because they have this, I don't know, preconceived idea about what science fiction is, which is unfortunate, but I still love writing it. So. Sometimes people just stink. That's all you can really say. Oh, that's say. true. What can you say? <laughs> 95% of the world is undateable. Let's say. <laughs> so. Well, we're visiting with award-winning author Connie Willis. Uh, now, Connie, I wanted to go back to uh, a, a book you wrote uh, in, in the mid-90s uh, called Remake. And uh, it's about uh, uh, movies being remade and, and, and you know, not... 
this is a, a point of contention between Brian and I that, uh, especially with the way Hollywood is making new movies, or <laughs> dare I say, not <laughs> making new movies, <laughs> and the, yeah. the dreaded reboot. Oh, my God. How did you see this coming back in 95? Oh, I was, I, well, because, because it's always been true. Actually, this isn't a new trend. You look, you know, like you think, you, you think that the Barbara Streisand star is born you know, is the, is a remake of the Judy Garland Star is Born. But actually, they're both remakes of an earlier version. Um, and, like, there were, if for all the movies that you think of, of classics from the 30s and 40s, I think all of them except Gone with the Wind are are remakes of silent films, you know. It's like they've been doing this forever. It's, there is no imagination in Hollywood. And it's so maddening because... They're, they will try to remake something that does not need to be remade because it was already a really good movie, and I have long lists of terrible movies that I would be happy to have someone remake and do them pro- properly if that's what they insist on doing. But I'd much rather that they did something new, you know, and different. So, yeah, so I've been mad for years. You should do that. You should do a panel about that at a convention. I think it would be a big hit. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, and Hollywood has... You know, right now, they're, I just read the other day that they're once again, um, they're, there's this company out there that offers to, um, to remake the movies that we currently have, like take out the swearing and take out the sex. Right. And one of them, <laughs> I loved it so that they would be children friendly. One of the films that they had done was Captain Phillips, which is that movie about you oh, know, Somali, the Somali pirates, pirates yeah. and capturing and murdering people. <laughs> and I was like... Wow, if you take out all that stuff, how long will this movie be? <laughs> now, this is a tale of a fateful trip. Da, na, 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 na. That's oh, it. I mean, I was just horrified. So, so yes, yeah, so I have that in the book, too, because I was, I am always, don't mess with stuff. Leave it alone. Right, Leave right. Leave it alone. They're works of art. So. Well, speaking of new stuff, uh, you are working on a, a new novel about Roswell. Yes. I am, and this has been, this is a novel that keeps getting bumped. You know, I was working on it, and then I decided to write Blackout and All Clear, and then I was working on it, and then I decided to write Crosstalk, and then, but now I'm really working on it. And I'm determined that it doesn't get bumped this time. And I've always wanted to write a road picture okay. kind of movie, uh, a road picture kind of novel. Right. Um, and uh, because I always have loved the road picture kind of, of movies. And um, I have, and I, and I love the Southwest, and I think Roswell is the strangest place on earth. And I get in endless arguments with people over, you know, they're always having aliens come in and want to enslave us all or eat us all or something. <laughs> right. And, or save us from ourselves, which I myself would welcome, but I don't <laughs> think they're going to do it. Um, but I'm just like, you know, we are in the middle of nowhere. We, we don't have anything really to offer. We're clear out on one arm of one galaxy, and, and I'm sure the bright lights of the universe are someplace else, you know. Right. And so, um, so anyway, uh, coming up with the rationale for why the aliens would come and coming up with aliens that are different from everybody else's aliens and sticking them all at Roswell, which, I, as I say, I think is the craziest place on Earth. Um, it has been fun. So Awesome. Well, um, Ms. Wills, how can folks find you and keep up with your work, find out more about this Roswell novel? Okay. Um, I have a website. Uh, it's ConnieWillis.net. And I also have a Facebook page. So All right. And, oh, can I say one thing real quick? Absolutely. There is another Connie Willis out there. <gasps> It's terrible, and and not just any old Connie Willis, but she she is a co-host on the late night radio show Coast to Ho- Coast. Oh, she, Coast to Coast AM. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yes, and she and she is believes in past lives and alien abduction and and be, she's a psychic and all these things and it's so annoying because I've tried my whole life to convince people that science fiction writers aren't you know nuts and <laughs> right, uh, right. this makes it way harder she's not so, helping your cause helping, not helping my cause no so but uh, but anyway so people need to get the right Connie Willis and she she owns the domain name ConnieWillis.com, which oh, is why man. I don't. So anyway, just well, you, so people know that they've got the right one. Well, you can always change your website to more science fiction awards in the industry than you.com. Oh, thank you. That, yeah. would, that would be nice, but yeah. braggy. And- <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's Dave. That's, so. I, I'm here for you. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, all right, Miss Willis, uh, your book, A Lot Like Christmas, will be on newsstands uh, October 10th and all your, all your favorite booksellers. We thank you so much for taking the time uh, to talk to us today. And hang on for one second. Okay. Awesome. All right, guys, when we get back, we will wrap up the show with a segment we like to call This Week in Geek History. Stay tuned. You're listening to The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Join the adventure at QuestCon, October 20th through the 22nd at the Mobile, Alabama Convention Center. We're taking over downtown with great events like our apocalypse zombie experience, post-apocalyptic wrecking yard, and our halo drop pods. We'll have fantastic guests like Gigi Edgley from Farscape and Paul A from Assassin's Creed Syndicate. There will be vendors, artists, and even a kids con for the little ones. QuestCon October 20th through the 22nd. Check out quest-con.com for more info. Black Tie Tans, the premier mobile spray tanning professionals of New Orleans. Black Tie Tans will come to you and give you a natural glistening glow on the go. First time customers get 20% off their first tan. Find them on Facebook at Black Tie Tans or email them at blacktietans at gmail.com to set your appointment. Going to a wedding? Going out to the club? Black Tie Tans will give you the look you need. Black Tie Tans, tell your pale friends. When you're in need of pain relief, come to Need It Relief Massage Therapy. Kat is an experienced licensed massage therapist. Check out her website and book your session online now at massagetherapykm.com. Need It Relief Massage Therapy for some much needed relief. You've waited for it and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com forward slash shop and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. In a New Orleans that never was and never will be, airships float high above the city while platoons of clockwork automatons patrol the streets below. In Storyville, pirates, streetwalkers, gamblers, and thieves prowl back alleys in search of their next mark. New Orleans by Gaslight, the premier anthology of locally written and locally produced steampunk poetry and fiction, all set in Victorian New Orleans. Buy it now, available in both paperback and Kindle versions at Amazon.com. New Orleans by Gaslight. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid by Nancy Hansen, is now an audiobook read for you by Brian Held. It's a tale of a young girl from Tortuga who disguises herself as a boy and bluffs her way onto a pirate ship, chasing after her one true love, only to find adventure on the high seas. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid is available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. Get your copy of Jezebel Johnston today. This is the Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. Follow them on Twitter at Twig Radio. Do it now. Welcome back. This is the Week in Geek. Just like the voice guy said, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now almost five years, Brian. Almost. Almost there, Papa Smurf. Yes. All right, guys. So, uh, Well, hey, the, the voice guy brought up something important. What? That he was drunk? Well, besides that, okay. how, how can folks find the show? <gasps> I see what you did yeah, there. Like now, that. as always, we strongly urge you to check out the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash the week in geek. Check out our website at twigradio.com. Follow us on Twitter at Twig Radio and the Instagram's The Week in Geek. Now, Brian, how can people listen to this lovely show? Well, once we're up there, we're going to host this recording on Spreaker.com, or you can download Spreaker for your smartphone or tablet. We're also on iTunes, YouTube, the iHeartRadio app, and at WRNO.com. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. All right, uh, I feel like we're forgetting something. I don't know. Uh, maybe we'll figure it out uh, after we jog our memory with some historical items. I see what you did there, too. Mm-hmm. Ah! 
This week in geek history. We're sending you back to the future. Yes! Oh my gosh! Yes! Ah! Oh my gosh! This week in geek history. Yes! Oh my gosh! Da na na da na na. Wow. Yeah, that's a sports reference there, Brian, by the way. Oh, uh, okay. Sure. What, what, Sports ball. All right. Uh, first item on my list, uh, October 2nd, 1950. The comic strip Peanuts, Peanuts. was first published. Yes. Did, so did, Charles M. Schultz. Did Snoopy ever talk? Um, I mean, I know he made some weird sounds in some of the cartoons on TV, but I don't, did they did he even get thought bubbles? Uh, yeah, he got thought in a yeah. No, I thought I don't remember him. Yeah, no, you're yeah, right. He, he got did thought, he because got thought he wrote bubbles. and he was yeah. like you know the Red Baron and yeah, yeah he did all that stuff. Woodstock, it was, actually, didn't Woodstock. Get Woodstock. Woodstock was just a little. No, he was a dirty potty mouth like you. Like they had like weird symbols and you're stuff right. in there. Like R two. Yeah, like yeah. R two is the is the most vile. Uh, um, <laughs> offender of FCC laws. <laughs> hey, bleeped out every word he said. Oh, he is. He is. Um, all right. Next item on my list is uh, October third, two thousand and eight. <laughs> the animated Star Wars: The Clone Wars, which is set between episodes two and three of the films, debuts on Cartoon Network. <sighs> what? I don't know. I mean, I just never really got into it. I you, didn't, mean, you didn't like the Clone Wars? I didn't like the animation. I like. I thought it was great. I didn't see story all of was it. really solid. Yes. On a lot of, especially the later series. Well, it was it was the episode. movie that, that that I did not like either. So like, uh, which, I mean, which movie the the Clone, the Clone Wars, Wars movie? movie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, for Attack you. of the Clones. Oh, 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 you mean the the animated the movie. animated one? Well, the animated movie and the series are really different. I mean, mm. it, it the series took off in a completely different direction. And I need to go back and actually watch it because I didn't see all the the stuff with Ahsoka near the end. I didn't see that. Yeah, that's all. It's it's all on Netflix. So. The whole thing, because the last season was exclusive to Netflix. Yeah, because I mean, uh, it didn't Obi Wan uh, kill uh, what's his name, uh, Darth Maul, in that series? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So yeah, no, I mean, actually, I- I've got it on Netflix. I- I've got it saved. I just, you know, there's so much, so little time, and oh, yeah. uh, you know, so uh, I-, I-, I forgot to watch Orville too. I got to go back. What's her name was in it? The smoking hot um, atomic blonde and uh, Charisse was- Theron. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm behind on uh, Orville as well, so I got to catch up on. I that. know that this, it, this fall is brutal. It if is. You watch I am. TV. It's I hard. am caught up on uh, Rick and Morty. Are well, you? yeah, they yeah. just had the season finale of yeah. it. It's, you know, there was. It's only like eight episodes or something. I mean, <gasps> Did y'all hear yes. about the Szechuan sauce that they released a whole bunch? Yeah. But they're like at, at each McDonald's, they only had like twelve. Like, yeah. like the lines were wrapped around the building. Everybody wanted to get the little Szechuan packs, you, and uh, yeah. You know what that reminds me of is the promotion. Cabbage Patch Kids? No, the promotion <laughs> from Bethesda with the Nuka-Cola Quantum. Yeah, at that Target. nobody Target. ever got. Did anybody get any? Well, because the Target employees were keeping it in a bank. They were stealing oh, it Sunzo. and selling it on eBay. What? Yeah, and Szechuan sauce has gone for $100 yeah. on eBay right now. It's <sighs> ridiculous. Absolutely. I mean, just you know, you know there's going to be the demand. It's not like, you know, hey, I don't know. I'm not sure if anybody's going to show up. They, right. They're just generating black mark, market enthusiasm. They, you know? they just want to generate as maximum dollars. So, you know, yeah. they probably released like a thousand more, but they just kept them there at, at their home studio. It's ridiculous. Yeah. All right. Uh, next item on my list. This is a pretty interesting one. October 4th, 1582. <laughs> Pope Gregory the Thirteenth implements the Gregorian calendar. No, no, uh, no, 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 no. In some locations, the <coughs> calendar skips to October fifteenth. Uh, I'm wondering if it was the Julian calendar preceded it, but uh, I would think so. Yeah. Huh? But uh, I just think that's kind of kind of cool. You know, I mean, we just think about the calendar, but it is the yeah. Gregorian calendar is what we use. So, kind of just nifty nerd stuff. Thank you, monks. Yes. Absolutely. They also make wine. <laughs> they do. Um, next item on my list, and uh, I wish you had the full complement of hotkeys for this one. Well, we don't. We don't. Uh, October 5th, 1969. <laughs> sees the very first episode of Monty Python's Flying Circus. No on one expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, and... Um, 
Actually, uh, Cyber Ernie's in town hanging out with us at uh, ContraFlow. And, uh, he he and somebody I, needs to go check his pulse. He's, we, he's been in that corner really quiet for a really oh, long time. Oh, wait. Oh, he's, he's alive. alive. He he's moved. Alive. We've got movement. But we were Game uh, over, actually man. discussing You're everywhere. Monty Python Squirrel. and how it really stands the test of time. You know, does it? It does. It's an excellent series. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, I mean, what was the Idiot Olympics or whatever where they had to jump <laughs> yeah. over the matchboxes? The, the, the <laughs> Tweet of the Year Award was <laughs> what that was. Uh, it was Not dead yet. very, very good stuff. It yes. Is. It is. All right. Um, now, Scungy, you can elaborate on this next item. It is uh, October 7, 2003. Nokia releases the N-Gage handheld Ugh. video game system worldwide. Ugh. What? What, yeah, what a brilliant idea that thing was. I, what, so it's in my items here, but I have no idea. What is it? Okay, so Nokia thought it was a good idea to try to make a phone and a game system okay. in one. Interesting. So they had they sold service and everything, and they had cartridges. It bombed. I mean, it was a flop. And I, I mean, did you play any of the games? Yeah, I mean, it was just it, it wasn't anything to write home about. It was just mobile versions of certain games. It was just terrible. It was right. awful. I'm glad it's it, they're in piles now. Yeah. All right. Like they're <laughs> it sit- went the way of the Wii. Exactly. And, no, the Wii was successful. <laughs> they're sitting right next to the ET video games from Atari. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, Same last, landfill. Last item on my list, and this one's a really good one, is uh, October eighth, two thousand and four. <laughs> Sees the premiere of Primer. A uh, sci-fi drama about the accidental discovery of a means of time travel, and it was made on a budget of seven thousand um, dollars. I don't remember this at all, dude. I watched this thing. I found out about it. Read an article. I watched it. I mean, you can get it. I believe it's on YouTube. It's on Netflix. Okay. It's uh, yeah. got like a bunch of the. the it looks really? like cords on the. the, the yes. What's the name it? of it's like it again? Cord. It's called Primer. Primer. And it's dude. It's so trippy. You have to watch it more than once. And there are charts that explain the timeline in order for you to kind of keep up. But don't look at any of that before you watch it at least okay. once. And it's it's interesting. It's very cool. Uh, they did a great job for, for $7,000. You understand nice. that you just told Dave to watch a show that involves instructions, right? Yes. Well, well, he can watch it and, and, and form an opinion. But uh, <laughs> All right, birthdays. You ready? On the second, Avery Brooks, uh, Captain Cisco. Oh, yeah. Yes. New Orleans captain. Yep. Uh, on the third, Clive Owen, who's Sin City. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, on the fourth, Susan Sarandon. He, he did He did shoot him up. Yeah. And, and then, uh, like, you know, well, I don't. let's not get into that. All right. On the fourth, Susan Sarandon. Uh, on the fifth, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. I just, I, I retweeted a picture of him and uh, LeVar Burton were reading a uh, you know, go to sleep, bleeper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. Uh, let's see. On the seventh, Sean Ashmore, he played uh, Iceman in the X-Men movies. Bum, 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 ba, da, bum, bum. Yeah. And, oh, LeBron uh, Iceman. Right. And uh, on the eighth, Sigourney Weaver. Yeah. Yes. The, the mother of, I don't know. We, Aliens? Yeah. Yeah. So. But, um, all right, Jesus, we, we, we made it, Brian. We did We're make at the it. home stretch. So, what, uh, what are we doing next week? Next week, uh, we're going to be recuperating. Oh, well, no, we yeah. no. no, we're still oh, on we're the, the freight We just train. started the gauntlet. Yes. Dang it. So uh, next week, uh, I am going to be stomping my Gulf Coast Fan Fest out in D'Iberville. Uh, that's going to be okay. on uh, Saturday. I'm going to have Jason Carter with me. We're going to be hanging out. You're going to be rolling through the hood with Jason Carter? You know oh, it. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, our guest next week, he's already booked, is going to be Kevin Hearn, who is the author of the Iron Druid Chronicles. Yes. He's got a new book coming out called A Plague of Giants, and I'm so excited to talk to him about it. It's really good. Could, could, could we get him to do a liner in the voice of his dog? Uh, uh, mate. Well, it's actually, that's his voice uh, narrator. Who oh, I thought book. it was him. No, Luke Daniels does the narration. Well, let's make book. him try it. Uh, well, we can. <laughs> sure. And uh, Bark also, like a dog. Also, I'm I'm working on the booking. Uh, woof, woof. Gigi Edgley uh, from Get Barstool. Get out! Yeah, she's going to be also. Dude, I love this job. Yes, I know she's going to be uh, a guest next week too, and uh, she's going to be, of course, promoting QuestCon, which is where we're going to be October 20th through the 22nd. So awesome! A lot of stuff going on, man. All right, I guess I should have started to play music here. So. You probably should have. That's a little loud. What? Yes. If the music's too loud. All right. 
All right, guys. So, yeah, once again, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and the Instagrams. Till next time, keep your nerd flag raised high. G-F-L.